Hello, I am Ahmad and we are going to continue the solution of embedded plate inside the concrete which we started in this playlist uh, according to Eurocode 1992 part 4 and we covered the solution for calculation of the tension force and then we went through the verification of different criteria according to the code. In this video we are going to start the shear force and how the shear force needs to be considered and be verified according to the code. First of all, let's recap what we had. Uh, it was a four meters by four meters wall, 400 millimeter concrete wall with the class of C3037. And we assume we are going to have one anchorage plate from Peiko product under the given design loads, 120 kilonewton as the uh, compressive load, bending moment. 20 kilonewton meter and also a shear force and kilonewton. So we covered the uh, compressive and bending moment. We check the uh, anchor bolts for the tension. Now it comes to verifying the anchor bolts for the shear force. First of all, we need to find out how this shear force needs to be uh, distributed between the anchor bolts so for that we go through the code so in chapter 6 class 622 one general only fastenings will uh, with no hole clearances or clearances in the direction of the shear load complying with table 6 1 are covered by this EM. So in table 6.1, we have some regulations about the clearance. You can check it out. 6.2.2.2 distribution of loads. The load distribution depends on the effectiveness of fasteners to resist shear loads, which is e.g. influenced by the hole clearance and the edge distance. The following cases are distinguished. A. All fasteners are considered to be effective for each of the following cases. If the fastening is located far from an edge, for example, CI in the direction of shear force is greater than maximum 10 times edge effective or 60 times D nominal. For verification of a steel failure and pry out failure, if the fastening is loaded by a torsion moment or by a shear load parallel to the edge. So this part A represents when the shear force is uh, distributing between the anchor bolts it should be considered that all of the fasteners are working for these three options so if we want to check a steel failure or pry out failure we will come to these two later so we need to consider all bolts are participating in taking the loads in part b only fasteners closest to the edge loaded in shear are assumed to be effective for the verification of concrete edge failure fastening is located close to the edge so in the direction of shear force if the edge distance is less than maximum of 10 times edge effective or 60 times the nominal then we need to consider only the bolts which are closer to the edge are participating to take the load number two a fastener is not considered to resist shear loads if the hole is slotted in the direction of the shear force sometimes we need to have uh, a slotted holes to have some clearance or more clearance in that case uh, we do not assume those bolts or those anchor bolts are taking any load we have a very good uh, illustration figure figure number six five in euro code to explain these uh, statements here we are so determination of shear loads for verification of concrete edge failure only the forces in the fasteners closest to the edge solid lines are considered in the verification example for example in part a group with two fasteners close to an edge loaded parallel to the edge here we can see that ved is the load which is applied to this part and then uh, when we want to determine half of it is coming to one load so in the direction of shear force they uh, it seems that they are far from the edge case b group with four fasteners close to an edge loaded perpendicular to the edge if we have this type of system which the bolts closer to the edge 
are loaded uh, perpendicular to the edge half of it will come to these two for checking the concrete edge failure that's important note so here we can see that the other two are taking nothing in this verification these are out of the scope but the other two which are closer to the edge are taking the shear force uh, part C, quadruple fastening close to an edge loaded by an inclined shear load. So here we can see that uh, we have shear force in the inclined direction by the angle of alpha and now this is uh, projected in two main directions along the uh, two main directions of bolts of the plates and now when we want to consider a uh, horizontal force which is vh it should be divided by four as we can see it is given here but when it comes to the other direction vertical v as far as these two bolts closer to the edge are uh, taking more load we need to consider half of it coming to these two bolts so the other two are taking nothing for checking or verification of concrete edge fail. That's the main part to start with. The other important part is to uh, distinguish if our fastener uh, is considered as with levier arm or without levier arm. For that, we have the other clause in your code that we can have a look together. Shear loads with and without levier arm. Number one, shear loads acting on fastenings may be assumed to act without a levier arm if all the following conditions are satisfied. So all of the following conditions. So the fixture is made out of steel and is in contact with the fastener over a length of at least 0.5 P fix. Fix uh, the T of the fixture. The fixture is fixed either directly to the concrete without an intermediate layer, layer or under uh, certain circumstances you can use the grout with less than half of D and also with the minimum uh, best strength class of 30 megapascal. So if these are considered then uh, the shear force is considered as without levier arm otherwise it should be considered as with levier arm that is not fit in our uh, widow right now so after that uh, again like uh, tension forces we have uh, a good illustration figure figure seven nine and also a table given in euro code uh, 1992 part four uh, that what kind of verifications we need so shear load required verifications the verification of table 7 to apply the failure modes addressed are given in this figure a a steel failure without levier arm b a steel failure with levier arm so if you have a, a levier arm you need to consider for example bending moment and it's a little bit different c concrete pry out failure and concrete edge failure Consider that when we are checking the first three, all bolts need to be considered to take the shear force. But when it comes to edge failure, then under a given condition, you need to consider the closer bolts to the edge that they are taking the shear force. So it's a little bit different, but uh, we will cover this as well. And also we have the table 7.2, like table 7.1 that we had earlier in the other uh, verifications. Very handy table, what we need to verify. So failure mode, again, single fasteners, group of fasteners. Uh, number one, a steel failure of fastener without levier arm, a steel failure of fastener with levier arm, concrete pry out failure, concrete edge failure, a steel failure of supplementary reinforcement and anchorage failure to, of supplementary reinforcement. So these are things that we need to confirm if we come to the columns. The first, uh, the third column is about single fasteners and the other two are about group of fasteners for example for number one we just need to check the most loaded fastener and for the third one and fourth uh, concrete pry out and edge failure we need to consider uh, the group failure so uh, that's the thing we need to consider for this video we just check the first option and then we will continue in other videos uh, just to avoid we have a very long video a steel failure of fastener 
shear load without levier arm is given in class 72231. Uh, the characteristic resi resistance of a single fastener in case of a steel failure VRKS0 is given in the relevant European technical product specification for a single fastener made out of carbon steel without a sleeve in the sheared section and without significant reduction in cross section along its total length VRKS0 can be calculated as follows. So K6AS FUK. Uh, K6 is taken as 0 0.6 if FUK is less than 500 megapascal and if it's between 500 megapascal to 1000 then it is taken as 0 point for fasteners with a ratio h effective divided by d less than 5 and a concrete compressive strength class less than 20 25 the characteristic resistance should be multiplied by a factor of 0 0.8 so now as far as we are checking for the shear we had in our example four bolts one two three four and the shear force was 10 kilonewton here we do not have torsion uh, but if you have torsion you need to distribute the load according to the uh, basic torsion equations so for now all the bolts are going to be considered as a result each bolt will take one fourth so 2.5 kilonewton this is ved we need to check if H effective divided by D is less than 5 or not. H effective divided by D is 157 millimeter divided by 16 millimeter. So it's 9.8. It is not less than 5. And also concrete class is C3037, which is not less than C2025. So we don't need to multiply 0 0.8 with R V R K S 0. K6 for us FUK uh, is 450 megapascal and AS is pi 16 millimeter S squared divided by 4 which is 201 S square millimeter. So K6 is taken as 0 0.6 and VRKS0 will be 0 0.6 times 201 square millimeter times 450 megapascal, which is 54.3 kilonewton. This is the basic value for that. And now we need to determine the characteristic resistance, which is given in the next clause of Eurocode. The characteristic resistance of a fastener VRKS, accounting for ductility of this fastener in a group and including a possible growth layer, with a thickness less than B over 2, here we do not have any growth. So VRKS is taken as K7 times VRKS. Here K7 can be taken as 1 for fastener in a group. K7 is given in the European Technical Product specification. For fasteners in a group, uh, the factor K7 for ductile steel can be taken as 1, but if the uh, rupture elongation A5 is less than 8%, that value needs to be uh, substituted by 0 0.8. Here we can see in Paycode Technical Manual that for SD1, which is in uh, weld up product, the A5 is greater than 15%, meaning that it is pretty ductile as a result we can use k7 as one so here we are k s will be one times 54.3 kilonewton now if we come back to table 72 the first item for a group of fasteners the most loaded fastener needs to be checked we have vrks we have ved for the uh, most loaded fastener which is 2.5 kilonewton and the only thing is gamma ms we need to determine according to table 4 1 uh, according to table 4 1 here is the table it's a little bit different from tension side we had it earlier so here in the tension you just need to use the first row but now we are talking about shear width and without levier arm these two conditions should be checked and whichever suits our case we need to take that value from there so here uk 
is 450 megapascal which is less than 800 megapascal and fyk divided by fuk 350 divided by 450 megapascal so 35 divided by 45 will be 0.78 and it is also less than 0.8 so both conditions are met and this and is valid here as a result gamma ms for this check will be the maximum value of 1 times fuk divided by fyk which will be 1.28 and 1.25 so it will be 1.28 now we have everything for checking this part uh, VED, the most loaded is 2.5 kN. VRD, VRKS divided by gamma S. And we determine VRKS 54.3 kN divided by 1.28. 42.4 kN. And then utilization ratio for this check will be VED divided by VRD. 2.5 divided by 42.4 kN about six percent 5.9 percent is the utilization ratio for a steel in shear uh, for now this is the uh, end of this video and we went through introduction how to shear force needs to be distributed between the uh, anchor bolts in this example we didn't have any torsion but if you have torsion you need to consider torsion to be distributed between the bolts and also if you have two directions shear force you need to distribute them as well but in this example we had only shear force in one direction and we checked the anchor bolt for shear in the steel in the next video we will continue with other criteria to verify our uh, anchor plate for the given loads and for shear thank you for watching see you next time bye